Understanding public sentiment is never an easy task. And India-Russia relations are anchored in history with mutual trust and mutually beneficial cooperation. This is a cooperation which has survived the test of time and has the backing of both countries' people. Relations between Moscow and New Delhi have been defined by a high degree of political and strategic trust since the start of diplomatic ties after India's independence in 1947. Russia, the inheritor of the Soviet Union's legacy, for both practical and geopolitical reasons, has remained India's sure veto in the United Nations and also as its greatest defense supplier. Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, described India as a great power, a friendly country and a time-tested friend. Echoing similar sentiments, Prime Minister Modi stated, despite the hurdles posed by COVID-19, the speed of growth of India-Russia relations remains unchanged. Our special and privileged strategic partnership continues to become stronger, he said. However, the two countries would face considerable challenges. This is largely due to the two countries' differing geopolitical actions. How they handle these concerns will have an impact on regional and global politics. Why public sentiment in India is not against Russia? Growing India-US connections are one issue that has loomed big over India-Moscow relationships in recent years, particularly in the last decade. Mr. Modi even hosted a large rally for Donald Trump when he visited India in 2020. It was a vibrant show of support for Washington, but by comparison, US-India relations have been more of a roller coaster. During the Cold War, relations between India and the United States did not reach their full potential. And, there are many factors which were responsible in determining the actual course. This was due to the preoccupation of the United States with the containment of communism which started the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union. The newly independent India, led by the first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, refused to be drawn into the Cold War politics of competitive military alliances promoted by both the superpowers. Nehru chose the policy of non-alignment which aimed to give India the much-needed independence of action in the sphere of foreign policy and relations. And the US regarded India's refusal to collaborate as a sign of unfriendliness. In 1954, the cause of improved Indo-US relations suffered a setback. The US through Cold War brought rivalry to India's doorsteps by forming two military organizations, CETO and CENTO, with Pakistan, who joined these alliances as a key member. In September 1954, the United States, France, Great Britain, New Zealand, Australia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Pakistan formed the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization. And, Central Treaty Organization, CENTO, was a military alliance of the Cold War. It was formed in 1955 by Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, Turkey, and the United Kingdom and dissolved in 1979. 1962, a new dimension to Indo-US relations. The war between India and China in October 1962 provided a new dimension to Indo-US relations. For the first time, numerous voices within India actively advocated an alliance with the US against China. Many people also wanted the non-alignment policy to be drastically altered. Perhaps there was a perception in the US that India was now ready to lead an anti-Chinese and anti-communist alliance. When the Chinese invasion became more serious, the Indian government submitted an urgent request to Washington for military supplies. The US responded to Nehru's plea for assistance, but it did so selectively or in a restrained manner by providing India with communication systems and small armaments, conscious that their partner, Pakistan, maintained that any weaponry given to India might and would almost certainly be used against them. However, pro-American sentiment in India decreased as a result of the US's unwillingness to overtly criticize Pakistan for beginning the 1965 war against India. 
In addition to U.S. assistance for Pakistan, the U.S. war, in Vietnam, contributed to a coolness in Indo-U.S. ties in the 1960s. Another watershed moment was the United States' reconciliation with China, with Pakistan's assistance, in the early 1970s. In 1971, the U.S. tried to corner India. The U.S. sought to avoid a second war between India and Pakistan after 1965, and also wanted to assist its main partner, Pakistan. When the war broke out in 1971, the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet's Task Force 74 was deployed in the Bay of Bengal to strike India under the guise of evacuating U.S. citizens from East Pakistan. India won spectacularly against Pakistan during the 1971 war. For decades, it was a definitive victory in a significant war. On December 16, 1971, 93,000 soldiers of Pakistan's Armed Forces Eastern Command surrendered. This was the largest surrender since World War II. In reaction to the American military presence in the area, the Soviet Union, which was actively supporting Indian efforts, both politically and militarily, during the conflict, also deployed two groups of cruisers and destroyers, as well as a submarine armed with nuclear bombs. In fact, during the 1971 India-Pakistan conflict, key U.S. decision-makers, including Henry Kissinger, encouraged China to launch military action against India. In 1971, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan pitted India and the United States against each other. Pakistan became the closest ally in facilitating military assistance to the Afghan Mujahideen. India became aligned with the Soviet Union between 1971 and 1991 to deal with the China challenge. The global correlation of forces shifted dramatically, with the United States and China banding together against the Soviet Union and the US making it clear that it would no longer come to India's aid or strive to discourage China if China imposed another war on India. However, Israel aided India, despite the fact that the two countries did not even have diplomatic relations. In fact, in 1948, India voted against the establishment of Israel. During the 1971 conflict, even though Israel was facing an armaments deficit, Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir chose to redirect weaponry destined for Iran to India. She even sent a note to then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi asking for diplomatic connections in exchange for guns. In May 1999, the Indian Army learned of Pakistan's large-scale military intrusions in the Kargil Dras sector. When Pakistani troops took positions in Kargil in 1999, one of the first things Indian military sought was global positioning system data for the region. The space-based navigation system, maintained by the U.S. government, would have provided vital information, but the U.S. denied it to India. India again turned to Israel, a country with technology and experience in border control and counter-terrorism. Israel aided India with mortar and ammunition and became one of the few countries that helped India directly. According to Nicholas Blell's book, Israel even provided India with laser-guided missiles for its fighter jets and surveillance drones. The Indian Air Force came across various problems while providing air support to ground troops, including inaccurate unguided missiles and limited sight of the Pakistani bunkers. They even had orders not to cross the LOC under any circumstances. At this time, Israel provided laser-guided missiles for IAF Mirage 2000H fighters. The precision bombing material then limited the advantage of the Pakistani soldiers based on high position and helped India without violating the orders to not cross LOC. So, the US is to blame for India's public distrust. Moscow was India's closest partner in the later Cold War, and the relationship survived the breakup of the Soviet Union. Russia remained a crucial source of military equipment and spare parts. It was also willing to county produce, with Indian companies significant for a country that was seeking to enhance its indigenous defense manufacturing capability. 
and Russia gave India access to defense technology that few others were willing to share. Russia built nuclear reactors in India and offered oil, gas, and opportunities for investment. And, as India looked east, it saw Russia as an important part of its strategy and solution to its China problem. Most Indian commentators have excused the Narendra Modi government's abstentions on the UN Security Council resolution condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The UNHCR resolution on human rights and even the decision to take the issue to the UN General Assembly as an attempt to make the best of a bad situation. They claim Russia has been a reliable ally, it has defended India in the UN over Kashmir. Moreover, to vote against Russia will push it further into China's arms, multiplying country's security threat. While taking sides in the continuing crisis may jeopardize the government's efforts. But the real question is how long India's neutrality will benefit it.